Hello, Tarek Maryface here, and welcome to the Maryface Aviation Channel. Today we're going to calculate TAS, ground speed, and heading without a flight computer. We're going to use the same question I used for the previous uh, ground school video. It's just we're going to use different methods. First things first, as you'll see, this method is a lot more elaborate. But I was asked to do this for, for a user, so I'll do it. But I should warn them, this is much longer and really, really not practical for exams. But it is more accurate, as most of you might have guessed. OK, so here's the thing. We've got the question data we're given on the site. So flight level 55, outside air temperature 12 degrees Celsius, a task that we don't know. Indicated airspeed of 140 uh, knots. Uh, wind velocity and direction being 01020 knots. Track being 060 degrees true. And we need to find the ground speed and the heading. Okay. So in order to find the ground speed of the heading, we need to know the true airspeed. Uh, indicated airspeed is different from, from true airspeed, and it's affected by a couple factors. Note that temperature should be within the whole atmosphere, different from ISA as well. But position error and compressibility, if you don't know position error, look it up. It's basically uh, turbulence and vortices and that kind of stuff in front of the pitot, which affects the accuracy of the pressure measurements. And compressibility is something that we will not discuss because it only applies to problems where the the TAS is great, uh, the indicated airspeed and TAS are greater than 300 knots. All right, so here's a general formula for working out TAS. I found this to be much more uh, accurate than what I posted. And it looks very, very complex, but it's actually not that complex and quite easy to learn. Um, you've got indicated airspeed plus one percent of the pressure altitude divided by 600 times the indicated airspeed plus 1% of um, every 5 degrees of ISA deviation. So there you go. And remember to use pressure altitude, so that will be flight levels, but without taking away those two zeros. OK, so here is a quick reminder of the formula. But before we can actually use it, we need to actually find out what the ISA deviation is. And we cannot find the ISA deviation without finding out what the ISA temperature is. Now remember that the rule of thumb for ISA is that at mean sea level, you've got 15 degrees Celsius. And for every 1,000 feet, the temperature reduces by 1.98 degrees Celsius, which we can round up to 2 degrees Celsius. Uh, multiply that by 5.5, because that's a flight level and we end up with 4 degrees Celsius. That's great. That's what ISA is. However, that's not what the actual conditions are. The actual conditions are 12 degrees Celsius because there's a difference. So we're going to actually use the ISA dev formula, which is the actual temperature minus the ISA temperature, um, which is, and it's very important to do it in that order, actual minus ISA, because if you've got a negative temperature in ISA, it will be a minus minus. So there you go, which would be a plus, basically. All right. So ISA deviation will be 12 degrees Celsius minus 4, because 12 is the actual and 4 is ISA. And we end up with plus 8 degrees Celsius. Well, now we've got the indicated airspeed. We've got the pressure altitude. And we have the ISA deviation. So we can plug it into the uh, formula. And we end up with this. Just read it out. And there you go. And you get a TAS of 153 knots. This, by the way, is calculated and rounded up or down. I don't remember which. I think it's rounded up. And if you look, if you remember in the Gen Nav, um, in the sorry, in the CRP question, we used, we found 154. So it's not that bad. All right. So we found the sorry, we found the TAS, and we're going to talk about basic maths and physics. Just two slides, uh, just to talk about. Uh, Components, uh, wind components. This is a, a top-down view on an aircraft that we're considering to be a point mass. And we've got the thrust, um, and we've got the winds. Now, uh, how should I say this? When we consider wind, we're going to consider it as the wind component going against the aircraft to be both the drag and the wind component. And it... That, that's basically what will make the aircraft slow down in terms of TAS. 
All right. Uh, and basically, since we're talking about air speeds, the thrust that we're using already takes into account the wind components. We're not going to be using forces. And the wind components here, the green arrows, add up to equal to the wind speed itself. That's very important to remember because it brings us to this slide. You've got sine and cosine. These are curves that allow us to calculate components. And as you can see, the smaller an angle is um, with the cos, the larger the value will be. And the smaller an angle is with sine, the smaller the value will be. So we can use these and we come up with these two expressions for y and x, where y and x are the different directions we're using. Um, and I would strongly recommend learning these two formulas, y equals wind times sine theta equals wind cos beta, and x equals wind sine beta equals wind cos theta. Uh, very, very useful if you are determined to, you, to find these answers calculating stuff. Right, and then a final rule of thumb, uh, which is that uh, when you want to determine whether a wind is a headwind or a tailwind, something that you really need to know in order to calculate uh, tasses and ground speeds and whatnot, um, what you can do is you take the wind direction where it's coming from, so in this case, zero, one, zero degrees, and you find the smallest angle between it and the the track or heading, most likely track better. Um, and if it's less than 90 degrees, then you're more likely going to get a, uh, a headwind. If it's more than 90 degrees, then you're going to get a tailwind. So that's a good rule of thumb. So all you have to do is do a little sketch similar to this one, and you'll know straight away whether it's a tail or a headwind. Okay, so let's apply this concept to wind problem, these two concepts. So Remember that a ground speed is the, the true airspeed plus or minus the wind component. So I've got the little diagram on the uh, bottom left, which shows us uh, the actual problem itself. And this is another way to determine whether it's a headwind or a tailwind, which is if it's within uh, the same 180 degrees, it's a headwind. All right, so what we do is we've got true airspeed plus and minus the wind component, which we can calculate using those two lines at the top. Uh, we know that wind is 20 knots, so it's going to be 20 um, cos 50 or 20 sine 40, because those are the differences. Remember that uh, in order to find the component, you use the cos of the biggest angle or the sine of the smallest angle when it comes to finding the um, headwind. All right, and that gives us 140 knots. Okay, so let's continue. We found the ground speed, we found the true airspeed. Sorry, whoops, that's meant to be hidden, but you saw it anyway. And now we need to find the heading. So we're gonna walk through this. There is a small degree uh, angle between the heading and track, and on the bottom left, you can see I named it lambda. Uh, that whole half-life sign, because it's also the annotation for a half-life of a radioactive source. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the top, top two formulas to find lambda. Uh, so, you know, you've got the wind crosswind is going to be equals to um, the, the, the true airspeed components opposing that crosswind. Uh, so basically, we um, remember how we're doing the wind components? Well, this is the same thing, except it's going to be for thrust components that we're using for tasks. So we rearrange the formula because we know that, therefore, if that's the case, then 153 sine lambda, sine of the smallest angle, um, is equal to 20 cos 10, which is the crosswind component. Uh, then lambda equals... We rearrange that to find that it's arc sine of 20 cos 10 divided by 153 knots. And we end up with lambda being equals 7.4. I don't know why I was so precise, but there you go. So we've got that. And now we have to look at the diagram again. And we see that um, the heading is going to be into the wind. Obviously, it has to be. And therefore, you're going to subtract it. And you're going to get 060 minus 7.4. 
So we're just going to leave it as 060 minus 7 and find a heading of 053 degrees true. That's it. The, um, it's long. It's easy. It's, it's really easy. It's just long and you need a bit of thinking. Which is why I don't like using these because it involves a lot, using a lot of time, spending a lot of time. Whereas with a flight computer, it's done in a minute or sometimes less. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. If you noticed any mistakes, please tell me. I will try and correct them. Uh, if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe. I also have a small uh, series called Mayday Talk, which just talks about airplane incidents and accidents. Uh, I hope I get to see you guys next time. And don't forget to visit my website, maryfaceaviation.com, where you will be able to download these slides. All right, well, take care and happy flying.